Hi everyone, Michael here, Vegan Space Scientist. I was intending to do a video this week reviewing the new environmental documentary Planet of the Humans, but I'm still working on that and so it's not ready this week and I'll probably do it next week because I've had to do a lot of research to really make sure I get it right. So today I'm talking about something that I was intending to refer to in next week's video anyway, so I might as well do it now and then I can just get people next week to watch this video. So why did I, as someone who cares a lot about the environment and has worked over the past eight years to try and bring about environmental and climate change action, work for an oil and gas company for 18 months? First, my standard utilitarian preamble. I'm a utilitarian and I think suffering and well-being of sentient minds are the only things that can matter eth ethically. So when I think about being ethical, I'm thinking about how can we most maximize well-being and minimize suffering. This means that I care about the environment not for its own sake, or for the sake of the planet, but for the sake of the individuals who live in it. So that's the humans and the non-humans. So for example, cutting down a tree is only good insofar as it brings about some good outcome for humans or for non-humans. Okay, some background to set the stage. I did an undergraduate degree in geology and geophysics, and I also studied climate science through electives. I had a friend through my undergrad who was a passionate environmental advocate and vegan, and he influenced me to become both of those things. I became vegetarian for environmental reasons mostly in 2012, and eventually became vegan in 2014. I took Al Gore's climate reality training in 2014, where for a week we were trained in communication and lobbying, and also in how to give this presentation about climate science and renewable energy. I did an undergraduate thesis on heat flow and geothermal energy in 2014, in my final year, and I started working at Santos in 2015. So why did I work for Santos, which is an oil and gas company? I discovered effective altruism after I started working at Santos, but I was already starting to think about how I can maximize my impact over my career by thinking carefully about what choices I make and what actions I take. To give you an example of this and how I was thinking, I had planned for a long time to go to Nepal with a nonprofit to help build a medical center in between my undergraduate degree and starting work at Santos. And so I had organized this in advance and I was going to go to Nepal. It was a self-funded trip and we were going to do this project. When I was getting close to finishing my degree and going on this trip, I was told by Santos that I could start working as soon as I finished my degree whenever I wanted. It occurred to me that rather than going on this trip, spending this money on myself to go, I could use that money to pay for someone else to go on the same trip. It would probably do about as good a job as me. And I could instead start working for Santos five or six weeks earlier. And then with the money that I earned whilst working there for five or six weeks, I could pay for someone else to go on the trip. So it was a choice between me going on this trip and two other people going on this trip. When I expressed this thought to some friends and family, to be honest, I felt like I was being scolded a little bit. I was told I was overthinking it or being silly. And so I ended up going on this trip to Nepal and it was a great trip and I'm glad I did it. But you know, I still had this doubt in my mind, what if I could have had even more impact by doing the unconventional thing? It was only after I discovered effective altruism a few months after I got back that I realized that this counterfactual thinking not only is actually quite common, but it's actually important and necessary, I think. So Santos was a job that with my geoscience skill set, I could work at and earn a great wage and donate a lot of money to effective environmental charities, animal charities, international development organizations, I was making almost six figures right out of my undergraduate degree. And I was able to donate about $81,000 Australian from the money that I earned over 18 months of the job, which was roughly half my pre-income salary over that time. And I wanted to change the company from within to be more environmental. I had worked for Santos over the past two summer vacations as a student geologist, and my dad worked there. I knew a lot of senior managers and executives at the company. And later I even came to know the CEO personally and was involved with a charity initiative with him. I figured that if anyone had a chance of changing the company from within, I had a pretty good shot. Now in thinking about someone's net impact of working for an organization, you need to think about the counterfactual. So that is to say, what would have happened if you hadn't worked there? So if I had taken some other job or if I just hadn't worked for Santos, what would have happened? Someone else who would probably be roughly as good a geophysicist as me would have taken that job on average, they probably wouldn't have donated as much money as I did to charities. They probably wouldn't have cared about the environment as much as I did. I could be wrong, but I think that's pretty uncontroversial to say on average. So therefore, I'd argue that by working for Santos, I actually did have a net positive impact. The other side of the question here is, what would I have done if I hadn't worked for Santos? And I 
Don't really know. I think I probably would have started my PhD a little bit earlier. My main day job at Santos was in the acquisition and processing of land seismic data. This data would be used by other teams to try and work out where they wanted to drill or explore next for oil and gas. I spent most of my time in the office processing data, though I did spend around eight weeks in the field where I helped to supervise seismic acquisition operations. This was really useful in itself because I got to see the process around seismic data acquisition, but not only that, around drilling and other operations in the field, and in particular, the environmental impacts. I can almost guarantee that the environmental impact of these activities is more than what some people think and less than what some other people think, at least in my narrow experience. But in any case, it was useful to see that firsthand. So I got to donate a lot of money and I got some good experience. But how did I go with my original goal, which is to try and change the company from within? Honestly, not great. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on myself. I was, after all, a graduate geophysicist working there for 18 months in a company with thousands of employees. It's possible that if I had worked there for longer, I might have been able to work my way up and have some greater impact being a team leader, manager, or an executive. But at that time, I think my influence was very low. There are two aspects here, environment and charity. I'm going to err on the side of not giving too many specifics because I just want to make sure I don't get in trouble. But two key examples come to mind for when I was trying to make meaningful change from within. First, I tried to influence Santos's charity program. Santos is a fairly major company in South Australia. At the time I was working there, at least, it was the biggest company headquartered in South Australia in terms of employees. I'd say most people in South Australia would know it by name. They have a very big and active charity program with partnerships with various nonprofits. I figured that if I could show them that there were nonprofits doing the same kind of work that they were supporting, except more effectively, then they would switch. If you can help two people instead of one, why wouldn't you? I met with the corporate social responsibility team and was presented with my first major lesson. After my presentation, they sincerely thanked me and said that they agreed with the premise. But they said that the way that they decided on which nonprofits to support was based on existing relationships with organizations. And one of their main metrics was to support charities that operated in the same areas that Santos operated so that they could have a social license to operate. If people where you operate like your company, then they're less likely to complain and to protest against you. They didn't say this outright, but I put two and two together. And this makes sense. At the end of the day, they're a publicly listed company, and all the shareholder typically cares about is the value of their investment. It would take a pretty unusual minor shareholder, I'd say, to care about the specifics of what an organization is actually doing, whether it's environmental or social responsibility, except maybe at a very broad level. And so, of course, they're not going to optimize their charity involvement around impact, regardless of whether the employees themselves agree or not. And I think they did agree with me. The second major lesson was when I tried to make the case for the company branching out into alternative forms of energy like wind, solar, solar thermal and so on. I made the pitch to some senior executives, including the CEO. I even brought them along to a solar thermal forum that I had co-organized. In the end, the economics weren't there, so they wouldn't do it. Again, this makes sense, and maybe I was being naive for thinking anything different. They're a for-profit company, and they'll switch away from fossil fuels when there is the financial incentive to do so. This is one of the reasons why I'm more keen on changing government policy rather than changing organizations from within these days. If a law has changed to make fossil fuels less profitable or alternative energy more profitable, that might be what is needed to tip a company over the edge. So I'm really glad that I learned these lessons firsthand very early in my career. I'd argue that me working for Santos was net positive overall, especially when you consider the counterfactual. In terms of direct impact though, if you don't count donations, I don't think I changed very much, if anything. I think that's where I'm going to leave it here today. The reason I wanted to do this video today is over the last five, six years, I've gotten this question a lot. Why would I, as someone who cared about the environment, work for an oil and gas company? I've been criticized for being a fossil fuel shill. I've been criticized for being in it for the money. But I hope I've given you at least a sense, if you feel this way, of some reasons why someone might work for an oil and gas company despite caring about the environment. These things might sound contradictory at surface level, but I hope I've at least given you an alternative perspective. So thank you very much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't, leave a comment, subscribe and share. And let me know if you want more similar videos, because I have some other things I could talk about of this kind of nature, things that I have learned over the past, my experiences, lessons that I've learned. So please let me know if this was useful to you. And thank you again for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you next time.